YouTube Nation, what is up? Eagles Truth here with you, and that's a wrap. Eagles beat the Atlanta Falcons 18-12. to um, My prediction was wrong. Uh, I predicted the Eagles would lose to Atlanta 20-17, to and I had the score pretty close, 20-17, 18-12. It was pretty close, but I had the wrong winner. Um, Nick Foles and the offense did about what I expected. Um, about what I expected, honestly. Um, the defense, however, kind of did more than I expected. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like, oh, my God, like, I, I'm thinking this defense sucks. No, no. I just thought with the Falcons, with all their weapons and, you know, getting, uh, what was it, Calvin Ridley and um, with Freeman and just all the weapons they have, Sanu and, you know, Matt Ryan and just... I thought they would put up a little more points. Um, the Philly special was brought out. I mean, I almost went into tears. I don't know how pathetic that sounds to you guys or not, but I was almost in tears. You, you saw it, you heard the crowd get into it, and you just felt it. And of course, they scored a touchdown on that drive, but like you just felt like, holy shit. Like you just felt the momentum clear from even watching on TV. Like it, it, carried, over, over, it carried over the broadcast. You just felt the energy. Um, it was like someone just fucking tased me with a whole bunch of electricity. Um, it was awesome. And then the final, the final man is like, at first, part of me thinks this game was very unwatchable because all the flags and, you know, the casual fan doesn't like defensive games. They want to see offensive output. So the casual fan probably hated this game. And with all the flags, probably a lot of the fans hate this game. But you know what? Seeing the Philly special and then seeing how it came down there at the end, um, made for a pretty dramatic game. Um, I'm going to kind of give away my next two predictions. I think the Eagles are going to go 3-0 now. Our next two games are the two easiest games, I think, in our entire schedule. In our entire schedule. So, even with Nick Foles, I think we might go 3-0. Um... So yeah, and it shouldn't be, the great thing about it is, and now maybe, you know, Nick Foles could turn it on like he randomly does sometimes and then look amazing, but the great thing about it is, and, and, and again, this is going to be kind of, um, people might people might hate on me for saying this, but if we go 3-0 and with Nick Foles under center for Carson Wentz, but Nick Foles doesn't have, doesn't look good in the process, we won, we win the game, we're 3-0, but Nick Foles doesn't look good, that's probably the best case scenario. Because then there's no quarterback controversy, or in Skip Bayless's words, no quarterback quandary. There's none of that. All right? Like, wow, this team overall is just really good. The defense is amazing. Um, now they're getting their franchise star quarterback back. You know, like, it just, it's a win, 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 win if we go 3-0 and with Nick Foles not playing that well. It's, it's, it's honestly like, just from a PR standpoint, puts us in like the best position, honestly. But with saying that, people are going to think, oh, you want Nick Foles to do bad. Look, I want Nick Foles to do whatever he has to do to win the game. I, You know, like, I do not care. If Nick Foles looked amazing tonight, say he threw like, you know what? Let's say he threw eight touchdown passes, broke the record against the Falcons tonight, looked amazing. I'd be happy. <laughs> I'd be happy as hell. So, no, it's not that I want Nick Foles to do bad. I'm looking at the bigger picture. I'm looking at the bright side of things because Nick Foles did not look good today. He didn't. That's, I mean, the offense didn't look good. So I'm giving you guys a bright side to look at. We won the game. We'll probably be favored in the next two games. So if we win those, we're 3-0. By then, I hope Carson's back, you know. And there's no quarterback controversy. Like, oh, do we, do we give it back to Carson? Nick Foles doing so well, you know. Let's just skip that shit. Skip that drama shit, you know. So... That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Um, I'm proud of the defense. I really am. They had that one um, touchdown run. Not because look, the Falcons. They're good. They're a good offensive team. They're gonna make their plays. They're gonna do that stuff and everything. I get it. I understand it. But on that one touchdown run, the lone touchdown that the Falcons had, it just didn't. There wasn't a lot of effort. It's not that they got a touchdown. Just, there wasn't much effort in that play. Um, there was a couple of times Jalen or Jalen Mills got beat by a double move because Lord knows that was what he does. <laughs> um, and a couple of times, yes, I know, I know Jones 
is, you know, Julio Jones is one of the best receivers in the game. He's top three for sure. For sure he's top three. So maybe maybe not after last year, but overall talent-wise, like just knowing what he can do, he's top three. Um, so he's going to get his. That's fine. But when he's so wide open and there's no one in sight, it's like, come on, corners. Come on. <laughs> you know, like, come on. At least make it contested at least, you know. So that's my take on it. Um, there are some offsides that drove me nuts. Sullivan. I don't even know you. I really don't. That was the dumbest play. I would cut you. I would straight up cut you. <laughs> because you don't play offense, really. You don't play defense. You're just a special teams guy. Big deal. Cut him. Cut him. Cut him. You need to cut somebody anyway because um, with Jeffrey and, or with uh, Bradham and uh, the guy we signed late, I think he's a safety. Come and you need to open up a roster spot. Cut his ass. Seriously. Now, I'm not overreacting because if you played a vital if you played a vital role or backup role in offense or defense in his vital, you don't overreact like that over one play. But he's nothing. He, he's nothing. And that was the dumbest play. You're sitting there blocking for a while. You don't think to look or what well, okay, even if even if you're wondering where the returner's returning at or whatever, and the people around you, you have to think people are looking down like you don't notice the ball's right. It's just stupid. Stupid. Fuck. Um, what's L? What else? Oh, look. I love Sproles. I love Sproles. Um, he's got a ton of heart. Um, I like him going, coming out of the backfield to catch the ball. But as a running back, like running the ball, we need to stop. We're overrating the shit out of this guy. We are overrating Sproles so much. He is not better as a running back than Jay Ajayi or, or Quickman. He's not. Not at this point in his career. He's not. And it was driving me nuts. So we just keep scrolls and it's like, and to the people that think that Corey Clement is not a workhorse back, that he can't be an all uh, every down guy, that he can't be your franchise running back. When has he proven he can't be? Cause you're just looking at his size and oh, well he's a change of pace back. How do you know? I want to know, how do you know? Has he proven? Cause every time I see Corey Clement, it's good shit. Good shit happens. Every time I see him. Every time. You need to stop it. It's like we're holding him back. Like, yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're doing amazing. Hell, you, I think you even... I, I think you could even replace Sproles coming out of the backfield catching the ball. I mean, you remember against the Redskins where Carson Wentz at the red zone, he had to elude everybody and then sidearm a pass to Corey Clement and he caught it over the guy in the Super Bowl. Remember that? Corey Clement's a good receiving back. And he's a good running back. But we just assume he can't be an every down, every down back. I, I don't fuck. I don't know. Um, so they were overrating Sproles too much, using him way too much. And it's like, oh my god, come on. Um, there was a couple of times we ran the ball on second and long, and third and long, and it was just like, okay, what a give up, I guess. You know, that's so there's some things I didn't like. There, there was. Um, but at the end of the day, we won. I thought this was going to be a loss. I thought we were going to go two and one in the first three games. I thought this was going to be definitely the one that we lose. No question about it. Now I think we go three and oh. <laughs> and uh, by that time, when should be back? Good shit. Good shit. All right, guys. I'm out. This video dragged on longer than I wanted to. Birds rep tonight. It wasn't pretty in the first half and wasn't pretty for a little bit there in the third quarter either. But eventually the offense started being coming a little more consistent. The fourth quarter was good. The fourth quarter, actually middle of the third quarter to the rest of the game was was theater. It was pretty good. Um, a little bit more flags than you would like, but it was, it was a pretty good game to watch. Up until midway of the third quarter though, those first two and a half quarters, it was pretty dreadful football. So I'm proud of the defense overall, very proud of the defense overall and uh, offense. Oh, one more thing. You got away with it again. And what I mean by that is we scored too fucking fast. We did it in the Super Bowl. 
I remember when Aguilar didn't go out of bounds, I'm like, oh my God, you idiot. And then Doug Pearson, like instead of running the ball, he just, all of a sudden we go score a touchdown. Everybody's like, ah, and I'm going to look around. I'm like, Tom Brady with like two timeouts and two minutes and 31 seconds. And you guys are all going, eh, okay. Well, it turned out that I was, I was the idiot. You know, we got a sack fumble. But I'm not the type of guy that lives in hindsight. <laughs> I'm not. I'm sorry. Like, oh, yeah. Because, honestly, it was dumb in the Super Bowl to score that quickly. It was, it was dumb. It was, the wrong, it was the wrong decision. It really was. It worked out. And because I know it worked out, I would not go back in time and change it. But at the moment, it was still the wrong thing to do. It was the wrong thing to do here, too. We scored way too fast. Um, and it almost bit us in the ass. So, I would like to tell Doug, stop doing that. Fucking run the ball, milk the clock, kick the field goal, let's go home. You know? But it keeps working out for him. So, it's like, fucking hell. So, I can't. It's like, well, you know, what do I do? It keeps working out for him. So, it's like, fuck. Um, I guess conventional wisdom goes out the window. All right, guys, I'm out. I'm happy we won. Um, get to sit back and enjoy week one knowing that we're 1-0. That's pretty cool, right? Peace out, guys.